you've been married one or 20 plus years, at some point, you realize you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. Welcome to the Married in a Crazy podcast with Snooks and Lovey. I'm Lovey. I am Snooks. And as you know, we've been running this series called the Him and Her Health Series. Mm-hmm. And we're back today with installment number three. So today we have a very special treat, Miss Angela Harris, Wellness of Life. She is the bomb. I've <laughs> seen her work. I've participated in it and I've benefited from it. So Okay, well, well. <laughs> Well, this is good. So a lot of times what we don't do is we don't try and give the full rundown. We love to have our, because invariably we'll miss something, you know, when it comes to reading somebody's CV or their resume or the their bio, accomplishments. Everything. So we always ask our guests to really kind of identify themselves, how they like to be identified, uh, because usually that's the most important things that truly come out. So Miss Angela Harris, how are you today? I'm fabulous. Thank you so much for having me on, Lovey and Snooks. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. And so grateful to serve and most importantly, just willing to contribute to your podcast and the people that are listening. So Thank truly you. grateful. Thank you. We appreciate you for uh, accepting and for being part of it. You know, a lot of people, um, you know, people want to be healthy, but sometimes they just don't know how to go about being healthy or what to do. So you are here. You're a vessel for all things health. <laughs> I've yes. actually picked up a lot of good things from you. So um, just tell everyone about yourself a little bit. Okay. My name is Angela Harris. I am the founder of Wellness of Life. I believe in holistic health and wellness. I'm an entrepreneur as well. And so my specialty is internal restoration. And I specialize in the digestive system. And in supporting the digestive system, we're able to address all physiology components of the body as everything releases into the digestive system. I also have my own brand of supplements as well as an author of a book. And I love public speaking and I love contributing to wellness coaching to help assist people in their journey to wellness, meeting people where they're at and fine tuning what's really best for them as their individuals, but also paying attention to their family dynamic, their lifestyle, their work schedule, and then manifesting a good time management schedule that's realistic so that they can be consistent long-term. And it creates a healthy relationship with food, a healthy relationship with others. And just knowing that going inward before they go outward is a large part of why we sometimes struggle. And I just believe in a strategy for the struggle and I'm here to serve and I contribute my gift, talent, skill, and ability to those in need. Amen. I love that. Everything you said, I was like, okay, sign me up. Yes, yes. I want, <laughs> I want some of all that. You know, yes. so, I, so people are probably thinking, okay, well, this is different. So it's the him and her health series. So I, I help our audience understand, because we invited you on specifically, because with, uh, with your holistic background, I think a lot of times in the United States, unfortunately, we have a tendency to go pharmaceutical first, and then pursue holistic if the chemicals can't help us. Whereas the rest of the world goes holistic first. And then if that doesn't work, then we go. For, I think maybe some of our, our, our listeners need to understand what does holistic mean to you? Yes, holistic is the whole body. So it's addressing the cause and not the symptom. And in holistic, we address the mental component, the physical component, the emotional component, um, the vital organs, the systems, how they function. It's the physiology. So a lot of times people may know anatomy, but they don't necessarily know the physiology. Physiology is all about the function, right? So we want to support the function so everything works and functions as a whole body. So it's just not one aspect or one localized diagnosis, but what is the cause of the diagnosis? And in doing that, you're able to reveal certain things that may contribute to a person, you know, escalating into different types of stages of illness and disease. So whole body versus a localized snapshot of where a person currently is at and addressing that, but paying attention to everything that can contribute to that localized diagnosis. So that's amazing. And and people are probably trying to think, okay, so what does this got to do with marriage? 
what does this have to do relationships? <laughs> and I'd like to, to submit that whether you've been married for two years or mm -hmm. 24 years, that right. th th there's cycles that take place within life. There's a lot of things. There's been times where there's been mental distress. There's been anxiety. There's been anguish. There's been, you know, euphoria. There's been a variety of things. And I think one of the biggest challenges we have in marriage or any relationship is managing those emotions and relationships. And sometimes we feel like we're outside of ourselves. And I, I remember a previous conversation you and I had that your digestive system has a lot to do with some of these you know, imbalances or, or, or things that take place within our body and the way they manifest themselves. How does that work? Well, first of all, 90% of your neurotransmitters are in your colon. And so when we talk about neurotransmitters, it communicates to the nervous system. The nervous system communicates to the brain. That's where the nerve receptors are. And the brain tells the body what to do. So what happens is when you have these chemicals like fight or flight, people are familiar with dopamine, serotonin, all these things that contribute to hormones, too high, too low can create anxiety, depression. And when it's not regulated, what happens is it sends signals to the brain and people can be reactive, not necessarily responsive. Mm -hmm. And then in that, the fear and the anxiety, the worry, the doubt, the depression, you know, also can set in, but also people that have a sense of happiness and joy when it is regulated. And it also goes back to the emotion and feeling because emotion and feelings happen first. And so, you know how sometimes people say, oh, I have anxiety, my stomach hurts. Well, really that's their colon, right? Or I don't feel well, my stomach hurts, you know, or my head hurts. All these things that are manifesting itself based on what they don't know as far as the physiology component. So through addressing the digestive system, you're able to help the system function better. So we're talking about 27 to 30 feet of who we are. That's a large portion of our well-being. And so when you address the colon, not only are you addressing just cleaning out the accumulation that dwells, but you also are regulating all systems as all vital organs and all systems of the body release into the colon. And so with that being said, sometimes people don't understand that feelings and emotion happen first, but most importantly, even spiritually, our belief, whether it's past, present, or what we're trying to manifest itself. You know, if you're operating on a sense of fear, right, based on things that may be in your past, and you don't know how to process it, and you're not releasing it, it can create your brain to think a certain way based on the nerve receptors that it's picking up. So sometimes behavior problems, addictions, um, also people's communication skills based on how they comprehend and also absorb information and process information. So it's one of those things like chi, flow, movement, all of those things that happen throughout the body, hydration from pure water, releasing, all of those things are a part of what people call today letting go. Hmm. So it's much more bigger than letting go because most people, you know, associate that with a sense of loss. And that's why it's not as effective. However, if you want to be efficient, meaning time is also a factor in that, you want to definitely believe in the release. So it's our belief system that also helps manage the mindset that creates the chemical releases based on feelings and emotions that create us to behave a certain way. Hmm. That's funny, that, uh, and I'm not saying it's funny, but like when you when you said when people are feeling anxious in the first day, you're like, oh, my stomach. And I've seen graphs of like your, of the anatomy and how the stomach is much higher than the colon. And I'm like, we do grab our, the lower part of our stomach, which is really not our stomach. Then we're actually, it's actually our intestines or whatever. Right. Yes. So the feelings you're, what you're saying is that the nerve receptors, I'm trying to be smart and use these big words. <laughs> <laughs> They're, they're coming from actually from that area. Is that right? Actually, yes. The transmitters are okay. coming from the colon. The receptors are what's in your brain that picks up the signal based on the nervous system. Right. And so what happens is 90% of your absorption is in your small intestine, which is a good 20 feet. Then you have the colon, which is considered the large intestine. And it's five to five and a half feet as where all of those feelings, chemicals, emotions, hormones, all of those things that create people to feel and be who they are, it contributes to it. And then if a person doesn't know how to manage stress, right, then that compiles on top of that. If they don't know how to communicate, it compiles on top of that. If they had a bad day at work and they don't know how to process the information, 
you know, or how to address certain situations in their life. It just accumulates no different than things accumulate within the colon. So that's why you have to make sure you release it in order to align. You know, I have this vision in my head as you were talking, both of you, that we, we talk about cell phones, right? You know, you remember that old commercial of Verizon? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> so, so I have this vision of like your brain being that guy that we saw in the commercials, you know, like, oh, I can hear you now. But it's like our brain, our, our gut is basically saying, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Because hmm. it's, it's like, it's depending upon what we eat, the emotional right. feeling. And if we're eating the, not, I won't say eating the wrong things, but if we're not really having a good basic nutrition or making sure that we have good colon health, right. that, the reception is off. So you might not have four bars, so to speak, in, in your right. gut. Maybe two. Your okay. mind might have all the receptors it needs, mm -hmm. but the reception between the two is messed up because of what we're eating and how we're not processing it. Is that almost like- yeah. I mean, that is a good analogy. Yes. And it's one of those things also like based on what you eat, whether it's healthy or not healthy, the goal is to have a healthy relationship with food. So your food turns into energy. So, so many times people say food is fuel, right? Well, fuel dissipates, right? Or they say you burn calories, right? And so that doesn't exist. But what we do know is mass and energy does exist. And when you don't release it, the body reabsorbs it. So 90% of your absorption. So when you talk about you know, what type of food you eat and whatnot, the absorption is going to be a huge factor as into what the body needs on a cellular level for it to thrive and flourish. So what your gut is doing is sending the signal, whether it's communicating, stop doing what you're doing, or it's communicating, I'm getting what I need, or it's having a breakthrough in a release so it can align accordingly. So if everything is dumping into it and you're not releasing it, then it becomes overwhelmed. When it's overwhelmed, it compromises the whole body, not just that specific area. And in compromising the whole body, then liver, kidneys, lymphatic system, blood supply, everything becomes compromised. And so then you get into a situation where things move slower. Stagnicity is a factor rather than energy. Everybody wants energy. Everybody wants to lose weight, right? Everybody wants to think more clear. So the mental capacity of all of that is all about, you know, gut health. That's what they short term name it. And so it's one of those things like the power of gut health is not just the second brain. It's really the first, because if 90% is in our gut and we only use maybe 10% of the brain, 13 to 15% of your genius, just do the math. And most people are reactive based on feelings and emotions first before they think. So mm. what is happening first? Okay, so who's the who's the marriage coach here? Because <laughs> I feel like everything that you just said right now, it's it's shining a light on for those couples that are listening right now, or those individuals that that aspire to be married. Think about all those times that you haven't had the energy to invest in your partner. Right. You know, in the past week, a week or so ago, we we had Mavis McKnight on the sex coach, and. One of the big things people say is that, oh, you know, I'm just too tired. I'm just, I can't, you know, to have that intimacy. But what if there was a controllable? And that big what if is what we eat and how we maintain our, our, our health from a holistic standpoint. Yes. So what if someone listening, what if, okay, they identify and they're like, all right, so how do I get started? What, what would you, what would they do? I mean, a lot of people think that they're eating healthy and sometimes it's stuff that's put out to say oh this is healthy or you know low calorie whatever it is it's actually not so what would be like some steps that they could take well step one is always going to be self-compassion and I like to address self-compassion because self-compassion represents a strategy for the struggle so many times people want a strategy for the finish line or they, they want to be told what to do and what to eat rather than how and why. And so having self-compassion allows a person to be able to say, you know what, I'm going to embrace where I'm at. You know, this is the concern that I have. And in that concern, I need to come up with some type of strategy that's realistic for me and my family. And also, if you want to get your spouse to participate in it, you be vulnerable in that. If they're not ready, that's okay. But vulnerability is also strength. 
Because when you have support from your partner, what happens is now there's teamwork. Now you're doing something together and then there's oneness. And we know as couples, you know, the power of oneness helps us achieve much more than doing it all by ourselves. We were not designed to do everything by ourselves. We were designed to be individuals, grow as individuals, so that we're able to show up as healthy individuals for any relationship that we are going to be in or aspire to be in. And that's really what it's about. So self-compassion is always step one. And coming up with a realistic strategy for the struggle based on the individual. So it's a real conversation. Like if a person says, I hardly drink water. Well, let's talk about how we can create a system that you drink more water. And what is it about water that you don't like? Or what is it about water that you believe? What are you telling yourself about water? What do you tell yourself about healthy foods? You know, do you tell yourself you have to eat what's trending? Or do you pick out the vegetables that you like and love? See, it should be with ease. And it should be with grace. And it should be with this loving relationship that we all aspire to have in our life, but it also applies to all things in our life. And so I just believe in that. And so when you have that solid foundation of that self-compassion, you're no longer judging yourself, shaming yourself, feeling guilty if you want to have dessert, if you want to go be social, if it's the holidays. You know, you give yourself permission to say, this is what I want to do today. One moment at a time, one meal at a time, have self-compassion, have a strategy for the struggle based on who you are as an individual and speak truth to it. And truth sets you free. And you can't apply another person's program in your life when it doesn't make sense. Mm. There's a lot of people that want to juice every morning, but they have children. They want to, you know, and they can't juggle. And so they become frustrated and irritated. And then when, when they don't get the results, they get mad at themselves. So they become mentally defeated. And that's not what it's about. It's about growing through your process. It's about growing through your process, not just going through it. And that's what I love to teach and coach people in doing. So you're telling me that when I was doing keto and I wanted to kill everybody in the house that. <laughs> that we should have called you. <laughs> right. <laughs> You were, yes, you were, you know, probably a little, I don't, I don't like to use the word off balance or fine balance. I like to use the word rhythm. You got to find your rhythm. And when you find your rhythm, you're like dancing and you're just grooving through it. Balance means everything has to be identical on all sides. And that's impossible. You know, your marriage is not going to be the same. You have a different relationship with your spouse. The children are not going to be just like your relationship with your spouse. Your work is not going to be the same as your children and your spouse and your marriage. All of those things may look different in your life. Some may need more, you know, attention. Some areas of your life may need less, but it's not all going to be identical, right? We all want to grow into healthier relationships. If it's healthy, you want it to be healthier. If it's not healthy, you want to find ways in order to make it more healthier and conducive for both people, no matter what the relationship is. So what I'm hearing so far is step one, you, you said unequivocally have self-compassion. Yes. Um, and then it sounded like what resonated after that was you, know, you have to find something that rhythm. So that way, whatever it is you execute or which you apply or you adopt within your life, there has to be some ease, you know, but you know, it's so funny that we fight against that rhythm, that ease, because at some point we were sold a bill of goods that said that, you know, no pain, no gain. We, right. We equated this whole thing of like, oh, in order to get my gains, you know, there's got to be something I have to go without. You have to suffer through it. And, and I'm right. hearing from you that, that that's not the case. No, not at all. It's one of those things that, you know, a strategy for the struggle is so important because if you don't master the strategy of the struggle, you will not be able to be consistent. So it's not if, but when it happens. Like when you have the sugar craving, what are you going to do? Not, okay, I'm going to, you know, get there. And when I'm at this certain weight, okay, I'll just indulge a little bit, but I'm going to try not to gain the weight back. No, it's about being consistent one day at a time, one meal at a time, one moment at a time, what you believe in, what you tell yourself, you know, the right people around you, positive, encouraging you, you know, and when you're trying to accomplish something, it's all about having people that's going to support your growth around you. If they're not supporting your growth, then, you know, you just don't stay there as long. You don't listen as much. And it's a brief conversation. 
You get around people that's going to support your growth, encourage your growth, you know, and it doesn't mean they have to necessarily be on the same program, right? It just means that they're encouraging you for you. Mm. I like, um, kind of like Lovey, you pointed that out too about the rhythm. I like what you said about balance because that means that with balance, everything has to be equal. And right. as life, in life, we know that that is not, not that it can't happen, but that's not the norm. The rhythm, sometimes you're, you, you're in a groove and then you might misstep but you can get right back into the rhythm. I like that. I, I'm, I'm going to start saying Yes. That. Yes. Because balance is not really um, appropriately used if you truly knew the definition of balance. That means all things are equal at all times on all sides. That is not realistic. What is realistic is we, that's like saying there's no movement. That's like saying there's no flow. That's like saying there's no momentum. That's like saying there's no seasons. You know, all of those things exist. And so when you say everything has to be the same and identical, we're not even built that way, designed that way, show up that way. So why would you tell yourself something like that when it's not obtainable? You will always be in search of something that doesn't exist rather than something that truly is. And what truly is, is the truth. The truth is we have rhythm, we have flow, we have momentum. We have movement. All of those things are real, natural, and with ease. And that's about grace. You want to gracefully go through things. You don't want to be in this state of mind of perfection and everything in the urgent box. That's not realistic. And that's not living life. Because then you don't have time to like just breathe and relax and just say to yourself, I'm really enjoying this moment or celebrate a benchmark of success. You know, so many people get mentally defeated and think they have to arrive or success has to look like this and feel like this and be like this. And, and it has to all fit in this box. No, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. It's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think the more we start to encourage people in their process, in their journey, I think we'll have a better community and a better world. We're all different, uniquely made so that we can learn from one another. That's right. And that's what it's about. And hopefully contribute to one another so that we all evolve as people. See, and I it doesn't that. have to look the same. I love that. I love that. I yeah. Love that. That's like, you know, first and foremost, yes, we are still talking nutrition people. <laughs> but, what's, <laughs> but what's funny is that when we're talking about approaching life, approaching your nutrition, approaching your health, from a holistic yes. standpoint, there's, there's harmony. And what you're hearing are some things that are harmonic with relationships mm -hmm. that are harmonic with how we interact with each other. Because one thing Angela talked about was having a relationship with food. Mm -hmm. So there's no mistake between having that same vernacular talking about a relationship with food and having a relationship with each other. It's about finding that balance like we were just talking about. So I think that is absolutely critical. If somebody was saying to themselves, but I feel like I'm always out of balance. I'm always out of, I'm having difficulties. You know what? I get what you're saying about self-compassion. I try to be more self-compassionate and, and I'm looking for that ease to worse. What are like, like two to three, like actual steps. If you, if somebody said, I just need like a, you know, the cliff notes. Remember back in the day in school, it's like, just give me the cliff notes. I don't want to read the novel. What are the like- Wait. Top two to three things that you would say, okay, first, you know what, you know, I, I don't know, I'm like water, you know, yoga, exercise, stretch. What, I mean, what, what are the things that you would tell somebody that says, I'm just out of balance. I'm just trying to find a way to get to a point to where I can be more receptive to even looking at some of these principles. Right. Well, I would ask them, how well do they listen? Because a lot of times people don't listen and it doesn't mean that they're not a good listener. It just means that they may be preoccupied. And so being a good listener um, helps you to understand what may be going on internally. Mm. And so in listening, I would say to the person, what are you telling yourself? Because what you tell yourself and what you believe, that's what you're listening to. That's right. And when you're listening to that, your mind is going to adapt to that. And so what happens is the mind begins to believe whatever a person is telling themselves. And that's what they're listening to. And so when a person says, okay, just give me the bullet points of what I need to do, 
Well, first of all, what are you telling yourself about food? What are you telling yourself about anxiety? What are you telling yourself about your job? Because if you don't address those things, it's always going to preoccupy space in your mind. And your brain will always resort back to that. So in order for you to develop mental, and in order to have a mental fortitude as it evolves, it's like, what are you listening to? Who are you listening to? What do you believe? You know, because the foundation is going to be so important for the structure that a person wants to try and build. And then you're, we're in this for the long haul, right? We're in this to really, you know, implement some things that are going to make a difference, but also understanding the template that was created in order for the structure to still stand, mm-hmm. right? It's going to mm-hmm. shake a little bit, but you want it still to stand. But right. what is your foundation? And so, of course, drinking water is absolutely, water is essential, right? The other thing is bowel regularity is essential. Every time you have bowel regularity, you give your body the opportunity to align. You give your body the opportunity to communicate and it's an indicator of how your body is functioning. The more you release, the more your body thrives. On a cellular level, all systems, and on a vitality level. And so definitely water, it's essential. Definitely bowel regularity. And then the other supercharge to the body is going to be trace minerals, electrolytes. That's how we're able to get good absorption of water, of our food. It's a deterrent for bad bacteria. It creates all of our systems to be in alignment and have a rhythm and have a flow. So those would be the three top things. Definitely, I would say as far as what a person can use as tools and resources in order for them to input into their body. But always the foundation is going to be, what are they listening to? What are they telling themselves? What do they believe? What are they trusting in? What do they lean upon? What is their strategy when they get into some type of, you know, difficulty in opposition? Because that's what's going to determine who they are in the depth of their being. Girl, you're so dope. I, I, just, I just want to say this. I know you want to jump in. But Forrest Snook says this. I just got to tell people, if you're all thinking like, oh, that's some new age stuff that she's talking about. It's not because I remember my grandmother, I would have a bad day at school or something would happen or I would tell her that, you know, oh, you know, I messed up in football. The first thing out of my grandmother's mouth was like, well, baby, did you have when's the last time you went boo boo? Right. <laughs> Excuse me. And I was right. like, oh, shit, that don't got nothing to do with why are you asking? That's gross. Grandma, why are you asking me about that? And, but I think there, there's there's a wisdom in knowing that there is a connection there. Mm-hmm. There's a huge connection, even in Western medicine, before you're released from the hospital after surgery, a bowel movement is important because that lets them know what the body is functioning properly. That's right. So even in Western medicine, you are not released until you have a bowel movement. It lets them know your body is functioning properly. It's an indicator. It's no different than an infant. An infant has to have a certain amount of pooping ones and a certain amount of wet ones. If it doesn't, the pediatrician is concerned. As we become adults, why does it change? Mm. That's a good point. Every time I've been in the hospital, uh, yeah, before I get released. You have to have a bowel movement. So Western medicine is clearly aware of how important it is. Well, there you have it. See, okay, look, all you guys are listening right now, y'all having an argument at, at home and it's just not working. I mean, you guys are just upset and you're thinking, you know, maybe we're not meant to be together. Maybe go have maybe, a bowel movement. Maybe we need to maybe we get divorced. That's right. I'm saying, you know what? <laughs> go have a bowel go movement. have a bowel movement. It'll be all right. Yes. It is yes, it is one of those things like, first of all, are you thirsty? Like, are you dehydrated? Drink some water. When's the last time you had a real good bowel movement? Right? And are you putting some electrolytes in your water? And then the other thing is, are you hungry? Because when people are hungry, they act differently. Mm. Blood sugar is up and down. You know, you know, you've heard of the term hangry. Amen. You know, and so it's one of those things, you know, people feel that way. And then the other thing is what they eat. I always teach my people, like, before you eat, think about how do you want to feel afterwards? And how do you want to feel in the morning? Because it changes things. Everything you eat, drink, absorb through your skin, conversations, environments, all of those things on a cellular level, our body digests. We digest everything on a cellular level. That's why we have to release daily, hopefully multiple times daily, like two to three times. 
And if you're cleansing, it needs to be like four to six times. Wow. See, the average colon carries around 10 to 40 pounds of waste. The average colon. 40? Did you say 10, 10 to 40? 40 pounds? Yes, the average colon. Most people only poop two to four times per week. Mm -hmm. Wow. Most people don't absorb their food. And now, just because you have fitness in your life or you're eating a certain you know, um, food regimen doesn't mean that you have bowel regularity. It doesn't mean that you're hydrated with pure water. It doesn't mean you have adequate amount of minerals. A lot of people are deficient because of those things. And when deficiency happens, the body begins to deteriorate, break down and devastation occurs. And that's when it's illness and disease. So for a lot of people, um, you know, they they always want to do the quick work or you know get the flat stomach and so they're buying these new fandangled um contraptions or whatever and you know they you we've we've all seen them on infomercials or you see them in the in the exercise aisles or whatever but one thing that i know has been what what's been said is that it always comes back to the kitchen the food that you eat mm -hmm. kind of like what you're talking about so mm -hmm. what exactly when you say you could have health in your or exercise in your in your life so what type of foods should we be looking at well plant-based foods are always going to be highly beneficial and plant-based foods that are green uh, green foods release water and it's important because water is essential so it's one of those things, some people want to go raw, but their digestive system may not be ready for it. So you could do steamed or roasted. Uh, the other thing, you know, sometimes people do plant-based, but based on their health and wellness, they can't eat too much fruit because they may have like, you know, diabetes or they may have inflammation. So you, even if it is a healthier form of a natural sugar, you also want to address the body in addressing water, inflammation and impurities and the release thereof. So everybody doesn't get the same template, but what we do know is green and lean is always a go. Everything else is no. And in that you just pay attention because what happens is when you start getting into colorations, even in vegetables, you start getting into more molds. You start getting into more sugars, even though it's plant-based and healthier, you have to remember the condition of the individual. So if you're addressing any type of sugar, addiction, any type of inflammation, any type of digestive system issues, meaning constipation. And there's a laundry list of digestive issues, irritable bowel syndrome, acid reflux, all of these things that people have. And it, the digestive system works as a system. So when one is compromised, the whole system is compromised. So plant-based greens are always going to be good. Lean protein is going to be good as well, um, based on the individual, as long as they don't have any sensitivities or intolerances, you know, you can get into certain grains, but always soak your grains first, complex carbohydrates, soak those first, draw out all the impurities and create it to be as clean as possible. You know, washing all meats, rinsing all fruits and vegetables, soaking a lot of the grains so that they're more sprouted as well. And then just remember whole food means it has not been altered. And then real food means it's homemade and it has been altered a little bit. Everything else is packaged and processed. The body's going to require more, you know, um, as far as a tolerance in order for it to digest because you're having food enhancers, chemicals, sugars, you know, and what happens is the body has to process that on top of trying to digest it. So whole foods always going to be the best because it's not been altered. So therefore the body doesn't have to work as hard. Real food's always going to be better than packaged processed foods because now you don't have as much additives. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. It makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just see so many correlations. You know, real conversations are better than the fake ones in your relationship. Real food's better than the fake ones when it comes mm -hmm. to your health. I mean, we're, we want to be healthy overall. You know, this is both <laughs> for him and for her. It's, it's about seek the real, the real food, right. the real relationship, but you got to do the work. You, you, just like you always, have to do the work go ahead. and get around the right people. See, it's one of those things like it spiritually speaking, you know, um, like the body of Christ has different gifts, talents, skills, and ability. And the body of Christ coming together in fellowship 
you contribute your gift, talent, skill, and ability. And so when you do that, and of course, Holy Spirit led, and based on the viewers, whatever their belief system is, as in faith, you contribute those things. It's one of those things, if a person's gifted in a certain, you know, um, credential, you have access to that. You don't have to spend 10, 12 days in hours researching something when you have somebody that has the credentials. And especially if they're spiritually grounded and they're willing to contribute to the body of Christ. That's why coming together to help one another is so powerful. And so it's one of those things, like I tell people, whatever your gift, talent, skill, and ability feeds the purpose because it's only one purpose. And that purpose is for all of us to evolve as people and grow. Come on. I love that. I love that. And, and, and everything that we're talking about right now, I, I, I'm so thankful because this, I think this is the one component of health that there's so many myths that are out there. Right. And people are concerned. It's like, you know, I, I remember my diabetic uncle that had just had an amputation mm -hmm. and go to visit him and he's drinking a big old bottle of Gatorade and he's convinced, hey, I'm doing better. I'm actually being healthy now. Right. Like, you, you're just drinking sugar water. I mean, you're just drinking a ton of sugar along with some, some colored drink, some dye. a bunch of dye in it. And all the, you know, right. so, but he's like, but it's Gatorade, you know? Right. And, and there's so much of that. And that's just one example, but there's so many different things that package. Oh, it's fat free, healthier for you. There's so many different things. Don't believe what it says on the box. If you don't want to read right. the box, get real food. <laughs> you don't right. Yes. And the thing is this, I tell people and I teach people rather than pay attention to the calories, pay attention to the chemicals. Mm. So, so many times people pay attention to the calories, but they don't the chemicals. And then as far as like your uncle's concerned, it's like he, in his mind, he's like, well, this is better than, you know, soda. So I'm not drinking soda. So Gatorade, you know, so it's, it's also like meeting people where they're at. Like some people are like, I'm drinking crystal light. That's better than Kool-Aid. Or, you know, I'm not eating a Snickers bar. You know, I'm just having these, you know, these candy treats, you know? And so it's one of those things like some people just don't understand because their belief about food, you know, what they tell their stuff about food and how they listen to their stuff about food, because there has been such a repetitive hypnotic conversation about this is what to eat. This is what to eat. And they tell everybody the same thing. You can't live off a of tilapia and asparagus the rest of your life. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, right. yeah. we, we have more fruits and vegetables than we do meat, right? I mean, there's other types of, you know, foods that you can try and give yourself permission. The thing is, when you think about soul food, for especially people of our culture, when they say, well, you know, I can't afford to be organic or, you know, I, I can't afford to, you know, eat this way or shop that way. And I'm like, real food is soul food. Because it's cooked from scratch. Mm -hmm. So you're familiar with soul food. So it's cooked from scratch. It's not packaged and processed and all these chemicals and food enhancers. Can we just start with soul food? Can you just cook a little bit more soul food, right? And do more plant-based, black eyed peas, greens, sprout your rice, you know, do some lean protein, cook a little bit more, you know, for the week. Can we just start there? Because that's real food. Come on, you're dropping gems. I'm loving this. Okay, so um, you have a Can book. Can you cook some more f a soul food? Um, no. <laughs> oh, I was just trying it out. Angela. No. Well, you know what it's called? It's called, it's called crock pot, right? And like, you can do like red beans and rice in the crock pot. Sprout your rice, soak your beans. You know, if you like turkey, you know, if you need protein, because he's talking about keto, you know, get some good, healthy turkey from Sprouts or Trader Joe's, put it in there, walk away and be like, there it is. Yeah. She's talking to you. You oh. can do that. <laughs> hey, you know what? You. you know what? Snooks. Men cook too. That's right. Lovey. Men cook too. Just saying. Right. <laughs> it's like a conspiracy. You know what? We're going to change the name of this series. No. <laughs> so what I want to talk about, though, real quick is um, you, yes. you wrote a book. Yes. Yes. Oh, and I, and I want to bring that up. Wellness of life, whole body wellness with ease. So yes. what made yes. you, what made you decide to, to write a book? Well, a lot of people have always told me I need to write a book so that they can have all the information that they learned from me 
just when I'm in clinic mode because I love to educate. And um, throughout the years of my life, you know, I have a lot of just, I call it free writing, journaling, you know, texting myself, emailing myself, things that I've developed years ago prior to colon therapy, because I've been practicing colon therapy for 22 years, but I've been in holistic health and wellness for 30. And prior to that, I have other credentials like clinical ecology, botanical pharmacy, and all these things as far as holistic nutrition. And then I continue my education in holistic psychology. So in clinical research mode and throughout the duration of my servitude, it was a matter of just time and when it was the right time. And I wanted to write something that was relatable, but pure and simple, where I could articulate um, no matter who was reading the book, no matter how credentialed they were, even physicians, you know, or just person that just wanted to know more about their body. So what happened is I just, throughout the years had so much that I researched and I kind of just put it together eventually. And I went to um, uh, like a writing coach event and I picked out my writing coach and I was like, okay, I think I'm ready. And so what happened was it was during a time where I already had a demanding schedule, but I was like, this is perfect because it created me to get out of my comfort zone and to be more out there and visible and it was time for me to be more visible and educate more publicly um, because I had been in the trenches and in research for so long, mm-hmm. you know, and so it manifested itself. And so the book came out the month COVID, you know, happened. And so mm-hmm. people had the opportunity to read. So it was perfect timing. We didn't know that. Um, and so through my writing coach, what I learned is everybody has a book in them. And it's a matter of when you're ready to write it. And I just tell people, when you write it, just give it all that you have. And what I wanted to do is keep it very short and simple, but yet intricately, um, you know, well-written. And um, I'm grateful that, you know, God manifested it because it's powerful. It's not just about holistic health and wellness. It's also about the depth of our being. And it's also about getting to know me too. And I think it was time. Okay. So I I want everyone to know um, the book is on Amazon and it's called wellness of life, whole body wellness with ease. So if you like what Angela was saying, go pick this book up. Um, Like lovey, we kept saying dropping gems. I mean, she told me things a while ago and I still remember some of the things that she said. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, um, I, I need to not do that. One time, I'm just gonna, I wanna just share this. When we, we had connected um, about nutrition and everything, <laughs> she came over and she cleaned out my, my cabinet. I was like, <laughs> what is she doing? She's Through like, oh everything. yeah, what is this? No, nope, that's not, no, nope, no, nope, this, what's this, whatever. And I want you to know, I never replaced any of that stuff. You know, the kids were not happy, but everyone got used to it and they got on, they, they got on board. And I, um, I, like I you know, when someone tells you something and you learn from it, you remember. And I remember how I felt after when we started eating certain things. So I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I like this, you know. I, I like it. So I want everyone to go and get the book as Angela Harris, Wellness of Life, Whole Body, Wellness with Ease. And you also yes. have, um, I want to make sure you still have the supplement line. Yes. Yes. Okay. My brand is supplement also is doing extremely well. Um, it was just endorsed by one of the former Shark Tanks from Shark Tank, Kevin Harrington. So he endorsed, yeah, my wellness of life brand. So that was awesome. awesome. And so I know, so excited about that. And then, you know, also at the clinic, we sell the book as well. And it's also on our website, wellnessoflifeproducts.com. So, and then I also offer a 10, 15 minute complimentary consultation, you know, even if people have not come in for certain services that I provide, but just to help them with their journey so they can kind of navigate to see where they're at and just give them you know, insightful information on where to start. Oh, that's beautiful. Can you give us the website one more time? Yes, wellnessoflifeproducts.com. 
is where you can go and shop for products. If wellnessoflife.com is the clinic. And then the phone number is 916-905-7743. And then also you can email me at wellnessoflife at gmail.com. Nice. I hope you got all those handles. We're going to put the majority of that in our show notes as well. Um, just out of curiosity, are you active on social media with Wellness of Life? I am. We have an Instagram page. We started just a little over a year ago and it's Live Wellness of Life. And we have some great videos on there, like how to make smoothies with our products, how to make salad dressings with our products, good, good, like quotes and affirmations, um, just very um, positive and encouraging for people. Yes. So um, now I know with the whole COVID and everything, are you, are you all open? Are you seeing clients in, in the clinic? Okay. Absolutely. People are trying to be healthy and stay healthy. So of course there's COVID compliance when, you know, you come in mm -hmm. and of course there's social distancing and, you know, it's very clean. My facility is very clean and, mm -hmm. you know, we were there. able yes. to, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we were able to sustain during, you know, COVID and people felt safe coming in. Yeah. So I'm very grateful that, um, you know, um, it didn't affect us like other businesses. However, you know, Wellness of Life supports 10 other businesses just from doing business in order for our business to do what it does all day long. So I'm grateful that we were able to survive and to continue to support the people that support us. Um, everybody that does stuff behind the scene in order for us to do what we do. Right. So we're all in this together. What people don't understand is when one business is affected, it affects the people that you do business with. That's so true. That's one thing that people don't, I, I don't think about it either. So let's do this. Um, at the very end of every one of our podcasts, we always reach into our I Can Can for Couples to pull out an affirmation for yes. the couples that are listening for the week. And so, okay. and we kidnap our guests to make sure that they participate with us. So I pull one. So you get to choose which one okay. you want to focus on or both for the week. Okay. Last week, week you went first. Okay. I'll go first this okay, time. Okay, you go first. So mine says, I can trust my partner. And mine says, I can put my significant other's needs first. So you can put my needs first. Supposed I need you to wash okay. my car. <laughs> She's going to talk about I need a Lexus. I, I need a Lexus. I know, but you say I need a new one. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, she, she missed her chance. Whatever. Yeah. Well, you just said, I can trust my partner. And you just talked about the 10 partners, the 10 businesses that Wellness of Life actually right. supports that you work in tandem with. Yes. So you're already living. Yes. There. Yeah, totally. So I received both, you know, of the um, I can. And um, I will continue to do better as we live one moment at a time, one day at a time. And my number one priority is to always be willing and grateful to serve. Amen. Well, we thank you for um, stopping by and dropping all of this knowledge. And I am going to just go out on the limb and say we are absolutely definitely going to have you come back at another time because um, I feel like the information that you gave us, it was probably just the surface. There's so much more that you can share in even more detail and, and maybe specific, more specific areas. So um yeah, we'll be hooking up because I know people are going to be wanting to know who is this Angela lady again? <laughs> <laughs> and I think we're all becoming right? more and more conscious about our health and, and how we can do better. Yes. yes. And I welcome questions. Good. I welcome questions and I'm not afraid to answer any questions. And I love to give people the insight and also to, um, you know, help them if they need a referral. You know, um, I think our new healthcare model is going to be whatever you need based on where you're at. Sometimes people start with Western medicine, need a little holistic, need some, you know, counseling and coaching. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, some nutrition and all that. I think a person's healthcare model is what's their immediate need at that particular time. It's not just one thing, you know, it may be multiple things that contribute to the individual to grow and develop. And I think that's the new healthcare model. That's what I like to believe um, as we need to help and support one another as we are all in this together. And if we say that, then that's what we have to be about. That's Come right. on, I like that. 
All right. Well, once again, I want to thank you yes. for taking yes. time out of your busy day to spend with us. <laughs> yes. Thank yes. you. And like we say at the end of every podcast, um, until the next time, be blessed. Yes. Bye-bye. Yes. Amen. Be blessed. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Okay.